Hello. My name is Kevin Huang, and I'll be introducing immersive POV filming how-to videos with a head-mounted action camera. This work is a joint effort with my wonderful collaborators, Jenan Lee, Mauricio Souza, and Toby Grossman. If I ask you to imagine a how-to video, you might picture something like this. Jamie Oliver demonstrating how to make mayonnaise. We refer to this as a show-and-tell style of video, where the demonstrator talks to the camera while demonstrating a task. Here is another show-and-tell demonstration, this time featuring Gordon Ramsay. Notice the cinematic quality of this video, with cuts between different camera angles and intricate editing. But how effective are these videos at actually demonstrating the task? And how are how-to videos being filmed across YouTube? To gain some insights, we conducted a survey of popular YouTube videos for some fairly common physical tasks. We found show-and-tell style videos where demonstrators talk to the camera. Here, this demonstrator is showing how to tie a clove hitch. Here is another show-and-tell style video, a demonstration on how to change a bike tire. But even when demonstrators were not shown, we found that videos were often still filmed from a third-person perspective. Here, a t-shirt is being folded. This video demonstrates how to make homemade mayonnaise. And this video demonstrates the tying of a square knot. However, research has shown that a third-person perspective may not be conducive to learning motor tasks because of what has been termed the perspective effect. A study by Garland and Sanchez found that participants were better able to tie knots after watching videos filmed from a first-person perspective compared to third-person. Fiorella and colleagues found that a first-person perspective was also advantageous for learning how to assemble model circuit boards. However, not all first-person perspective videos are filmed the same. One way we saw first-person perspective videos being filmed was from an over-the-shoulder angle. But this angle can result in an included view of the task space. Close-up shots can offer a clearer view, as can top-down shots, but these angles can feel awkward or unnatural. We refer to those first-person perspective angles as being quasi-POV, which we differentiate from a head-mounted POV, as seen here. Here's another head-mounted POV video. We found these videos to be engaging to watch, creating a greater sense of immersion and presence that we felt was lacking from quasi-POV videos. However, we note that POV videos restrict the viewer to only seeing where the demonstrator is looking at a given point in time. We wondered if this might also result in less viewer agency and immersion than if the viewer were able to freely look around. Indeed, 360 VR videos provide the viewer with three degrees of viewing freedom, and their use in instructional context has been promising. For instance, Yaganathan and colleagues found that medical practitioners were better able to tie surgical knots after watching an instructional video in a VR headset compared to those who watched the same instruction as a POV video on a laptop screen. This implies a potential immersion effect. The recent development of more portable 360-degree action cameras has allowed for the filming of high-quality, head-mounted, 360-degree video filmed from a POV, which we believe would provide an immersive POV. Here is a mayonnaise-making demonstration filmed in immersive POV and then viewed in a VR headset. The viewer has an eye-level POV and is also able to freely look around the task space. This results in a what-you-see-is-what-you-get viewing experience, putting the viewer in the demonstrator's shoes. To evaluate the effectiveness of immersive POV, we set out to answer these research questions in a user evaluation. Firstly, would immersive POV lead to better task completion and learning outcomes compared to a static third-person perspective video? And secondly, would immersive POV also lead to better task completion and learning outcomes compared to regular POV? To investigate these questions, we selected two motor tasks inspired by the video survey, folding a t-shirt with the range roll method and tying a shoelace with a double slip knot. We filmed our own how-to videos for these tasks in immersive POV, along with a POV baseline and a static third-person perspective control. These videos were simultaneously filmed in a lab environment on the same black tabletop workspace. This yielded three content-identical viewing conditions, a static third-person perspective video, a regular POV, POV video, and an immersive POV video. Participants were assigned to one of these three viewing conditions. Participants either watched the Ranger Roll filmed from a third-person perspective, and the double slipknot film from a third person perspective, or they watched the Ranger Roll film from a POV, and the double slipknot film from a POV, 
or they watch the Ranger Roll in a VR headset, an immersive POV, and the Double Slipknot, an immersive POV. All participants then attempted to replicate the task. Here is a Ranger Roll being attempted. Here is another Ranger Roll. And another one. Here a Double Slipknot is being tied. And here is another participant completing a double slip knot. We gather data on how participants watch their videos, specifically how long they spent watching and what parts of the videos they went back to. Task replication, which we timed and also scored for completion, and user preferences through questionnaires and debrief interviews. Results for task score, time spent on task replication, and time spent viewing task videos are shown here in these graphs. A one-way ANOVA revealed that total time spent on task replication was significantly different between groups. A post-hoc Tukey's test revealed that immersive POV participants spend significantly less time on task than POV participants. A one-way ANOVA revealed no significant differences between groups for viewing time. However, a more nuanced picture emerged when comparing viewing time for specific sections of the videos. We found that participants in the third-person perspective condition spend significantly more time watching two critical sections of the Double Slipknot video compared to immersive POV participants. Here are the results from the post-task questionnaire. Immersive POV participants reported a significantly reduced cognitive load compared to both third-person perspective and regular POV participants for the range rule. However, for the Double Slipknot, immersive POV participants reported reduced cognitive load only compared to third-person perspective participants. So, Revisiting our research questions, we found evidence for a perspective, perspective effect for the double slip knot, but not the range rule. We suggest that the concept of perspective sensitivity is an important consideration. The range rule is a less perspective sensitive task compared to the double slip knot, and this may have moderated the perspective effect. We also find evidence for an immersion effect with immersive POV providing advantages over POV. This is despite the fact that our tasks were constrained to a small tabletop space and so participants did not make full use of the three degrees of viewing freedom in immersive POV. This suggests the immersion effect is quite robust. We also observed that immersive POV participants tend to watch the videos in the spirit in which they were produced, as a single long take, and this was the good effect. We suggest that putting the viewer in the demonstrator's shoes with immersive POV could enhance viewer confidence and perceive self-efficacy. Aside from learners, immersive POV can also provide advantages for how-to video makers by streamlining the video production process. Altogether, we can conclude that immersive POV is a promising medium with which to film how-to videos. Future work could look into incorporating immersive POV into AR, which might involve the addition of task guidance or visual indicators to further assist with task learning. Thank you very much for your attention.